Okay, so it's time to get our hands dirty and build a video conference application using a media server. For this lab, we'll use Currento. But first, let me show you what you will build. So I will open localhost 3000. I will put the name here, user1, and the room name, WebRTC Training. I'm going to click Enter. And now I'm going to do the same in the other tab localhost 3000 user2 and the room name webrtc training okay so we have the application running now let's see in another tab user3 same room WebRTC training. And now we have a multi party call. Before jumping into code, let me give you before jumping into code, let me give you a quick explanation of how this application works. We will have three components exchanging messages. These are the client, the signaling server, and the media server. In this case, Currento. Same as with the first chapter, we will use socket IO for signaling. So when the first user signs in, the client sends a message to the signaling server, which in turn attempts to create a room in socket IO. After the room is created, the signaling server connects to Currento in order to initialize a Currento client that later is used to create a media pipeline for the room. This media pipeline is used to define how media will flow during the call. This is made by connecting endpoints. We'll get into this in a minute. After creating the media pipeline, we create an outgoing WebRTC endpoint for the user. This endpoint will send users' local media to all other users. The server then stores user's information and notifies him somehow that the endpoint is ready. On the client side, we dynamically create HTML tags for local media and also create a send-only WebRTC peer. This is nothing else than a fancy way to name the RTC peer connection that will be used to send local media to the server. Also, somewhere behind that fancy name, lies the call to get user media api then we have the usual then we have the usual offer and answer mechanism and ice candidates exchange between the send only webrtc peer and the outgoing endpoint when a second and third user arrive we have a similar scenario but with some differences instead of creating a new room the server simply gets the information of the already created one. That includes the media pipeline, which is used to create another outgoing WebRTC endpoint, this time for the new user. After that, the server notifies all other users that a new participant has arrived. In the client side of these users, new HTML tags are dynamically created for the remote media of the new participants, and the receive only WebRTC peer is also created. Same as before, this is nothing else than a fancy way to name an RTC peer connection, only that this time it will be used to receive remote media. Such object then creates of an offer and sends it to the server. In the server, an incoming WebRTC endpoint for existing users is created if it doesn't exist already and is connected with the outgoing WebRTC endpoint of the new participant. As we said before, we'll get deep into endpoints in a minute. For now, let's just keep in mind that this connection between endpoints allow for media being sent from one end to the other. Then, the incoming endpoint processes the offer and sends an answer. Next, we have the usual offer an answer and ice candidate exchange between the existing participants and the endpoint. While this is happening, 
the new participant received the list of current users and performed the negotiations for sending his local media and receiving the one from the users. Now, let's take a quick glance at the endpoints. We will be using Currento as an SE few media server, which means that the media stream a user sends will be routed to all other participants. Under the hood, this is done through endpoints. Each peer will have two types of endpoints, incoming and outgoing. Users will send their local media to the outgoing endpoint. Inside the pipeline, the outgoing endpoints are connected to the other peers' incoming endpoints, who send media streams to the clients. So, now that you know the basic functionality, we're ready to jump into code. When you're ready, move to the next lesson.